I'm so frustrated. Hey up woodlanders, welcome to another woodlog. We are today in Rossiston. Back at Rossiston, if you're uh, familiar with our woodlogs, then you'll know that Rossiston is a fairly regular haunt of mine. It's uh, woodland owned by Jeff, he's a local landowner. He's got about, I think it's about 20 acres of National Forest Plantation woodland. And he manages that firewood for himself we manage the hazel so this bit just behind me is last year's cut the bit we just walked past which is sort of over and through there you might see some taller bits there and they're up to they've got to be up to about eight nine ten foot now that was the previous year's cut so this is all doing very well most of it's up to about five and six foot we're just coming across now to where the orchard is again if you're familiar with the wood logs you'll remember the orchard from last year and we cut all in there which I mentioned a couple of weeks ago and then we're in this section here now so all in this lot we've got hazel it's I sort I'd probably class it as overstood it's certainly not neglected Jeff did cut this many moons ago realized how big a job it is to cut hazel <laughs> we've got to dive into that lot today but an interesting spec we've got this year there's a guy who takes all my f well, i call it firewood it's cordwood and he takes all that off me green and then he converts that into firewood and sells it and last year it was all three foot lengths but he says can i do six foot lengths this year so that's actually helpful for me Plus, um, I've not really got much in the way of stakes and binder orders, and to be fair, I can't get binders. I can't get decent binders at all. And there's definitely nothing in this. I've got another guy who's contacted me, and he wants 500 poles at six foot and eight foot. And he wants them for um, like wigwam building for kids. Yeah, so that and the firewood, and there'll be a few stakes coming out of it, but not too much. But most of it really is between five foot six and eight foot. So I'm gonna to do too much short lengths, which saves fuel and time. Anyway, talking about time, let's crack on and get something cut because time's money and all that. made a bit of a start just time for a tea break if I show you the products we get out of it we've got some bean poles there just wants dressing a bit more yet we've got some six foot poles for a chap who wants to make wigwams we've got some eight foot poles for the same purpose we've got some firewood we've got some hedge lane stakes and then we've got some Real scrappy stuff for charcoal, I believe I can turn that. And then we've got some rods there that have got to be dressed ready for hazel panels. So that's just a few of the products we can get out. Fairly straightforward today. I can show you some 
interesting things I've found so far. This fairly big stool here, this one here, fairly big. It's about two foot across. And then what it had done is that little stem there, they've gone across here. And what's known as layered itself. So what it was, it was a branch that was coming out. If you look, it goes reaching for the ride. That's the grass ride there. So that branch was coming out, reaching out and touch the ground at some point that then sends roots down into the ground and carries on growing out and i severed it so it's, it's okay to sever that's been there for oh, well that's been there 10 years it shows what hazel does if it's left and touches the ground and you can you can manufacture that getting a long whippy stem bending it over pegging it into the ground or getting a big log and weighting it down you can scratch the underside of the hazel Put a bit of leaf mould over the top and maybe on the next cut so if you get everything coppiced leave that in don't sever it off the main stem you'll find that next time you come to do some cutting that may well have rooted and it's a really cheap way it's just a little bit of time when you're doing your cutting rather than planting new plants because what it is it's getting all of its energy from the main stool which is far better than trying to plant new plants called layering that usually produces another stool and if you knew that already apologies but if you didn't know that give it a whirl let me know how you get on well, I'm gonna have a tea break We've managed to get down the back end here. We've got a long way to go yet. But on the first day, I'm happy with that. Now you might notice if I just upend you so you're lying down, you'll see that's the oak tree canopy. So we get that back to where we started. And so these oak trees are on these edges here. Their canopies are basically touching at the top. Now, if I left that, these hazel stools would basically die because there's just not enough light. And I've gone on about this before, so apologies if I'm just repeating myself. But for you, if you've only just subscribed, you might not have heard me rant on about this. So through there, you've got the light because we thinned that part of the coppice. So that's the, the bit that we did all last year. No, it's a lot thinner than this. With the leaf on as well, it makes it look a lot worse, but it gives you an idea of what summertime would be in here. It would be dark, really deep and dark, horrible. So I'm just going to mark up some of these edge trees, and Jeff the landowner says he's on about following me as I cut coppice. So I'll go and get my marking spray, and we'll mark up some of these trees, but it looks to me like nearly every one of these oak trees that are adjacent to stools. So we've got stool there, but we've got an oak tree there. We've got stool there but we've got an oak tree there and they're just too close and i i hate thinning <laughs> makes me feel guilty for cutting down trees but there's some scrawny looking things so that one there it's got a, a multi a multi sort of crown to it so as it goes up it's got quite a forked crown to it it's got quite a decent stem that's about i bet that's about 15 foot long but those ones behind it, that one there's bent, look, it's on a right lean. Uh, that one there's all wiggly, so I don't think that'll amount to much. That one there's got three leaders to it. I'm going to gather my tools. I'm going to do some marking up, and that's about it for me today. Anyway, I shall see you in the morning. Don't be late. Morning! What a stunning morning as well with the sunshine on my back. We had proper rain last night, did you hear it? 
A bit of a storm round our way last night. Fair few inches of rain by the feel of it, but uh, I don't think it's inches, but just clean your eyes a minute because you've got dirt on your eyes. That's better. Back at it again this morning. Right, let's dive into that lot there, look. Handy tip for you if you ever cut in coppice is on stems like this where you've got sort of fat stems and then quite thin spindly ones which you often get on new coppice regrowth is I tend to cut out the thin stuff first sometimes with a view to getting it out and getting it cleared out of the way but I find that if I'm cutting out the fat stuff first what I'll end up doing is catching the thin stuff with the saw and sort of ruining it so I tend to nip out all the thin stuff you know weaver style up to about an inch get that out and off on the floor and out of the way usually and then I can get out the thicker stuff then and actually cut out now that's just my preferred method I don't honestly know if that's actually going to benefit anybody and anyway, it has just a handle tip for you let's crack on First order bean poles, that one. It's got 20 bean poles on order. They should be going out end of the week. It's nice to have these little orders. Right, uh, what's next? Make a bit of a mess on Jeff's grass, don't tell him, will you? He won't notice. Well, it's pelted it down with rain and it's only 11 o'clock in the morning and the forecast looks like it's on and off all day with the possibility of a bit of blue sky for about 10 minutes. So we are going to change our plans this afternoon. I think I'm going to nip up to our woodland where we've got some shelter. I've got some hazel panels to make. So I'm going to nip up there, I think, while I've got, rather than waste my time sitting in the van waiting for it to dry up. I might just go straight up there, so I will see you up there. Well, they forecast rain all afternoon and it hasn't dropped a bit of rain since I left Rosserston. Which, oh, I find so frustrating. I have sold some of my uh, storage heater bricks. Uh, I bought these for the retort project, the Dragon, and realised I actually brought the wrong thing really, but I did use them and they've been absolutely fine. I've got a few spares for the uh, the dragon, so that's those ones over in that corner. But these, I'm like, why, why do I want all these? Put them on the auction site, and they sold within a day. Anyway, this guy's bought the whole lot, 140 of them, and he's going to use them as ballast in a boat. Anyway, they're out of the way. I've got a couple of quid for them, so I can put that to other uses. I'm going to buy some food now. Right, that's 70 in there. We've got just, I think we've got another 80 there. Here we've got a really interesting four foot square one. Um, now four foots present some challenges in that if I was to put what I call it a transom, which is like a mid rail, top to bottom, if I was to put a transom in, you can't then get th four rods in to get a weave that doesn't drop out because it's too tight so you can't bend the hazel round enough so I can't put a mid rail in but 
but four zails over four foot means you've got a foot in between each zail and to be fair that's a bit too big then so on this one if, I, if you have a look on this one i've gone for five zails that's going to make my life a little bit more of a misery in trying to go to weave because it just takes longer but i'm going to see how it works It's absolutely pouring with rain <laughs> and before I get stuck in the in the van I'm gonna go it's only about three o'clock but uh, I can't get any rods because they're all like they're all down there look they're all getting absolutely soaked the rest of the rods are at the bottom of the woodland and I'm not getting soaked for that my, uh, my action camera has gone flat so I'm not even gonna bother getting another battery for that I'm just gonna get out before I get stuck because that is gonna be miserable so, we will see you in the morning. Hey up, we've had a bit of a mixed day today. Um, first of all, I was meant to go up Jeff's and up the woods and get some copies cut. Only BT rang, or BT contacted us and said they're gonna come and fix the broadband and the phone because the phone and the broadband weren't working properly at all so anyway I think it's fixed it but that meant staying in for that and then I thought well I'll have a bit of a workshop day so I got busy doing this and this is going to be it's going to be like that that sort of orientation this is a necklace stand for Ellie Ray she was given quite a few necklaces a while ago and they just get all knotted together and sort of wrapped up and I was looking for some sort of rustic idea and I noticed this branch in the workshop a couple of weeks ago and I thought that's the one and apologies because I wanted to bring you along for this project only today my head wasn't in a very good space I didn't feel up to standing in front of the camera and explaining things I just wanted a day on my own to get my head straight just had kind of like a weird day yesterday and I needed time to just assimilate. So today I would say I dropped down to probably a 30 to 35%, um, which I've perked up from, thankfully. I might might be a solid 65 now. Uh, and better now I've done this. So what I've got to do with this one is wax it. Of course, this other project I wanted to bring you along for was this one. So this is, four segments of silver birch I've had in the workshop for a long long time and I experimented if you could zoom in for a second you might be able to see there a drill hole and one there and one there I don't think there is one in that one and somebody said to me a long time ago if you drill out the pit that's that bit there the, where, where the center of the tree is drill that out with a small drill it relieves a lot of the tension in the wood as it dries well I've had this in the workshop for about five years and I don't know whether the pith has worked, but I didn't drill it out on that one and that's been fine. And I did drill it out on these and these have been fine. And the idea is you drill out the hole, you drill it out slightly bigger when you're ready, put a little peg in it just to fill the pith hole back in again. So I've yet to do that and these aren't glued together yet. What my brother wanted was quite a big slice of timber, sort of 12 to 14 inch round. So you can put a clock mechanism on the back and the clock hands will stick through on a spindle then and the clock face will go round and this is about the best i could come up with because i hadn't got any big timbers i could use so i've had to sort of cut these out i plane them by hand because it's all end grain which is quite difficult to plane so i planed it with a hand electric well a hand battery plane and then dropped them on the sander just to try and get them a little bit better. They're not perfect, I might have to do a bit more work to these yet. But that's still a bit more to do yet, so I've got to glue that up and then route out the back for this clock mechanism. And the other jobs I was doing today was sorting out some planks for Karen so she can do some more pyrography because she says she's run out of timber. So I've been doing that as well, but I did bring you on for that either, which 
I sort of wished I had it done, but I didn't. And I will try harder and do better for you next time. What a stunning day. I've been to fetch some joists. So I've got some reclaimed joists on here from Angus Hancock, who runs a gardener's body over at Stoughton Harold and he's a forestry contractor and sort of pulls in reclaimed stuff now and again. And I needed some joists for a project at home. Our front room has got a basement underneath it. And two of the joists are toast. In fact, they are absolutely shockingly bad. And that's all because of some budget DIYs that happened about 40 years ago. So I have to replace those before I can carry on with any living room DIY. That could be an upcoming DIY disaster project. I don't know whether to do any of those because because the channel's more about woodland craft and things like that, do you actually want to see house DIY projects? Just going to nip and fetch some rods back in a moment. Do I just keep it all on one channel? Are you interested? Will you unsubscribe if I start putting DIY stuff on there? Because I've done a couple of DIY videos before on this channel. One was the bookshelf, I did one in the attic, I've done a couple of little bedroom bits and pieces on the edge of other woodland videos and well I wouldn't say they've done particularly well and even the outdoor kitchen project hasn't done as well viewing wise as I thought it might but it is a bit niche maybe That's that four foot one done then. So you remember the other day where I was talking about four foot wide makes significant challenges if you only do four zales. So in this one I've done five zales. One, two, three, four, five, just in case you weren't sure how to count. And although challenging in that everything has to be driven in from the ends, um, it's definitely made for a stronger four foot panel. If I have to again, I will use this method for definite. I just realised, I've just been on YouTube, I had a quick look at the channel, and we have cracked the 400 subscriber number, which I, I never thought that 400 of you guys would actually want to watch me. But uh, thanks anyway, do appreciate that. It's uh, quite remarkable that we've grown. When I first started doing YouTube as, as a more regular thing, I've been on YouTube for years, but... I used to do silent videos because I hated the sound of my own voice. But since I learned to edit, and around about January time when I started to upload a little bit more video work, in January we had 12 subscribers, and that was only because some of them were friends. At 500, I said I would do a giveaway again. We are creeping closer to that number. We're on 401 today. So have a quick look down, see what the subscriber numbers are at, and then you'll know from the time I did this on Friday the... Friday the 4th of November today and you'll see what, how, whether it has grown or whether it's gone down and it might have gone down yet. So if you're new here welcome aboard we're all kinds of crazy stuff going on here uh, but it's roughly based around woodland management and woodland craft that's but it, it can be a bit random enough of that waffle let's get on and do some work And that's all we've got time for folks we will see you next time round. in the meantime if you're able to try and enjoy some woodland goodness again this week see you soon and thanks for watching My, uh, what do you call these what do you call these excuse me if i've got snot running because it's gone cold
to the look, uh, oh, excuse me, clean the rolls out. Excuse me. 